I look like I'm taking notes. Hello and welcome to the Woodsman's Podcast, brought to you from the studios of Furnace Creek Productions. My name is Max Ledoux, and I'm the host of this podcast, but I am not the woodsman. The woodsman in question is Ed Butler, known as the working class woodsman on YouTube, Instagram, and Patreon. But on Twitter, it's WC Woodsman 603 because Twitter does not allow really long usernames. Uh, so, Ed, this is our first podcast, so I think that we should tell the listeners, and we thank you for listening, we should tell the listeners, why are we doing a podcast? Why did you want to do a podcast? Well, uh, first off, I, I uh, started doing podcasts with Jack Mountain Bushcraft, um, mm -hmm. who's a, a buddy of mine. And, uh, and what's, I, his, what's his website? Jack Mountain Bushcraft. Uh, if you probably... Most of you are familiar with it, but anyway, it's, he runs a bushcraft school up in Northern Maine, and um, I started doing podcasts with him, and actually, it's a lot of fun, and uh, I was surprised at how many people listen to podcasts, and since then, I've li started listening to other folks, uh, their podcasts, and it's become kind of my routine, so I was like, you know, with, with everything else we do, why don't we just do a podcast, and hopefully, the goal is to get, um, bring people in. Uh, that are item specific like foraging or uh, a particular biologist or something like that. And that's the goal, whether or not it's going to happen or not. But, but and also too, the podcast will kind of run along the lines. Um, like when we first, well, when I first started doing a YouTube channel, I basically just wanted to do a channel that was uh, specific to New England, New Hampshire, right. but New England, which covered every, you know, the, with the kind of rolled with the seasons because, as you know, New England is basically. It, nothing's it's just constant change of season it's never ending and, it, and even within no. a season it's yeah. so like for instance we had a we started a fire in our wood stove like three nights ago oh yeah yeah and uh yeah for for anybody who's listening later in the in the year this is the end of june yeah so and uh um because i own a heating business which is how i you know uh, keep myself in pants but um I had customers that were uh, texting me two weeks ago with furnace issues. And right. It was, you know, June. I'm like, yeah. this, this is wrong, you know. <laughs> and actually up in uh, Ziskahoss, where a friend of mine, Rick, has a place up there, he, uh, I forget when it was, it was in June that he actually sent me a text. He wrote the date in frost on his windshield. So they had a frost <laughs> in June. So it's, you know, it. Uh, New England is just famous for, you know, wait five minutes, the weather will change. Yeah. So, which, and we actually have all four seasons pretty much in any season of the year. Yeah. <laughs> if you think about it. Yeah. You'll so, some, we'll even have a thaw in January and you'll be out in your t shirt. Yeah. Very common. Uh, very common. Uh, Jan, the old January thaw. But, you know, and, and oftentimes it doesn't freeze until, like, for instance, this year it was uh, below zero. We had probably one of the coldest Decembers in a long time. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then it, then it, it kind of went easy on us and then it we've had yeah. a very cold spring so anyway not to get off on the weather but uh but as, as i said it's a very interesting climate to live in um for a lot of reasons but but again the back to the youtube channel the reason we started the youtube channel was to to cover those so basically january um is pretty much the only thing to do around here is ice fish you know unless as far as being you know along the lines of being a woodsman i guess mm -hmm. if you will I mean, we do, you know, we spend January pretty much ice fishing, and for the most part, the ice really isn't even safe. Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of the the, the, the the lakes, you can't even start ice fishing, like on Winnipesaukee. You can't go ice fishing till January 1st. Right. right. The other smaller ponds, um, you can. You yeah. know, you can fish whenever there's ice. But We are always hearing about people going through the ice, though. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. another issue. You know, people ice, and I get a lot of crap from people when, when, I, when I'm out ice fishing, it's like, you know, I grew up here. I know you, you know, I, I fall through the ice twice a year. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's a difference between falling through four feet of ice and, you know, driving out across 100 feet, you know, 100 feet of open water with a with a 4,000 pound vehicle. Yeah. Or a snowmobile where you don't know where you are. Right. And unfortunately, every year we, we yeah. do, unfortunately, people die. Yeah. Going through the ice. So it's not a joke. I mean, it's not, don't take it lightly, but we, you know, Going out on the ice is a part of part of life up here, right? But you just got to know the area, know which, and even even when you know, 
uh, you know, I, I, like I say, I go through the ice all the time. Yeah. And one of the really great videos that you had, uh, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, was when you were talking about the uh, ice picks that you have, yeah. that you wear. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is just, you know, it's, it's very practical. It's a very good advice. You know, yeah. you have to prepare for the possibility that you would go through the ice. And, and unfortunately, and I see a lot more people wearing those. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they they just, you know, you can get the ones that just kind of clamp around your uh, your neck and they're right there. A lot of times you don't realize I'm wearing them because I wear mine inside my clothes tucked into my gloves. So it doesn't look like I'm wearing them, but they're always tucked in there. Right. So if I go through the ice, I just pull off my gloves and they're right here in my hands yeah. and I can't drop them. They're like the old, remember the old idiot mittens? Yeah. You know, your mother is. <laughs> yeah. So if you pull on your left hand, you punch yourself. <laughs> yeah. Same idea. But uh, I, the bottom line is I'm not going to drop them. And I know, I yeah. know they're there, but uh, it, it's, a, you know, it's something you got to think about when you're out on the ice. It's, uh, you know, it, it, when you least expect it, you're going to go, you're going to fall through. It, it's inevitably sooner or later, you're going to go through. And uh, you just got to know how to, you know, try try and avoid that. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, not a, not an ice safety lesson, but, um, but anyway, so in January, yeah, we're ice fishing. We're out on the ice, hopefully catching fish. February is pretty much the same. Um, for the most part, I mean, we do, we're running cusk lines, we're ice fishing. There's also the the Winnie Rotary Ice Fishing Derby, mm -hmm. which is a big event uh, around here, and um, there's always something interesting every year that happens in that. Yeah. So we'll probably save that for another channel another yeah. day. <laughs> but then March rolls around, and everyone says, "Oh, March is nothing to do. It's gray. It's depressing. It's this." Well, quite quite the opposite, because March is probably some of the best ice fishing. And a lot of people at ice fish have given it up by then. They've 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 just gotten sick mm -hmm. of it. But some of the best ice fishing is in the month of March. We used to call it March Madness, and uh, it it was some. I mean, usually ice in and ice out are the two best times to be ice fishing mm -hmm. traditionally. And we we some of our best success comes in the month of March. Um, and then after you know, there's also that's when the maple syrup's running. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're busy uh, gathering making maple syrup. Um, and, you know, between that and, oh, and also too, that's when I'm usually spring beaver trapping. Right. And, um, I, I do, I do trap as well as a few friends of mine. We trap beaver and muskrat in the spring because the, the, the hide is good. And it, you know, we do eat it. You know, we eat all the. We have had the beaver cook off. <laughs> oh, we had the beaver cook off. Yeah. <laughs> so we probably we made no puns, no, no puns, puns yeah. at all. No. All evening long. <laughs> that was the uh, 2016 beaver cook off, right? Yeah. yeah. We did a beaver vindaloo. We did a. That was the best. That was awesome. That yeah. was good. We did a, um, a, a flat tail soup uh -huh. that I did. We did a beaver stew, and Jim did the bone in beaver thighs, if I remember correctly. That was pretty good, too. It was phenomenal. Yeah. It was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, and if. Uh, I, I can't even start talking about it because we're going to go off on a rant yeah. about jokes. So, anyway. Well, <laughs> if you mention, though, beaver to people, most people who've had beaver will kind of go, oh, uh, you know. Well, like, they'll say, yeah, you know, I tried. Yeah. I, again, I, 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 I go stop myself. But, yeah, <laughs> they, they usually people shrug. and But as soon as we cook it up for them, it's like, oh, my God. Yeah, you got to season it or do it in a certain yeah. way. Or... I mean, it's you, if you. Uh... Straight beaver is just kind of <laughs> tastes like wood. It's, it's, yes. It tastes like a wet it's, piece of wood. It 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 seems it can yes, uh, but uh, we'll we'll again we'll probably do more cooking videos. If you go back through the YouTube videos in the mm -hmm. cooking um, section, there are a lot of beaver recipes. Yeah, and we're gonna talk a little bit later about the YouTube channel and yep. pl plans for the channel and yep. how it's set up and all that. Yep, and we'll get into that a little bit, but uh, so that's that uh, gets us through March. So we're gathering sap and making syrup, and we're we're, we're beaver we're trapping for spring beaver, and we're uh, doing some really good ice fishing, hopefully. And then April rolls around. April first is salmon season, mm -hmm. and that's the, everybody is always psyched about that. You know, you go down on the you see the guys down on the docks catching salmon, rainbow. This year was a really slow year um, for a couple of reasons in our area uh, in Wolfboro because the uh, they never really opened up the current and hmm. it just really was never a current. It was cold, colder than usual. The water temperature never really warmed up. It was just not a great so year. Who's they? Uh, they, um, they, they controlled the lake like fishing of, game or, well, no, I, and, and don't, uh, don't quote me on this, but <laughs> it, uh, that river comes, comes from Lake Wentworth and the current 
if if the dam isn't if the dam isn't open, there's no current. Right. And and a lot of a lot of stuff plays into that. Like if we have uh, if the water table's low and there just isn't enough water. Right. Uh, if we have don't have the runoff from the snow. Uh, the bottom line is the lake was low to begin with, and we just never really got enough rain to for them to open yeah. it up because they have to maintain a certain level in that lake. Right. But like the year before, last year, not not this year, but 2017 was phenomenal. Uh -huh. There was a current right through. I mean, there were guys catching salmon in July, literally. Wow. Off the docks, which is unheard of. Wow. It also brought in a, a lot of white perch, which never happened. Uh -huh. So, uh, and that's that's another thing. Um, that we're getting into once we're into April, we're looking forward to the white perch run. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't really, again, it wasn't that great this year. Uh, it, you know, it was okay. Uh, we caught a few, but uh, when April, you know, April is pretty much salmon season and uh, you're looking forward to the white perch, you know, things of the woods are waking up, everything's starting to come into, into bloom or yeah. whatever. But, and then May, May 3rd, once that rolls around, that's Turkey season. And that's, again, that's very anticipated and people get, is that is that always May third or is in it New Hampshire first, it's May third? It's May third. It's yeah. not like the first Thursday nope. or nope. whatever. No, nope. it's always May third, and it's either you know it's I think this maybe this year was it a Wednesday or a Thursday. It's it's just whenever the third is. Yeah. So I was gonna go with Ed and and be with you know hang out with him while he sat in the blind and yep. waited for turkey, and he said uh, yeah sure I'll pick you up at what like three thirty three four four o'clock four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I, I'm not typically a morning person. And I, <laughs> I, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself a little <laughs> later, but I, uh, so I said, okay, it's one, you know, I can do that. Sure. So I set the alarm for three 30 and I got down, lay down in bed and just could not fall asleep at all for like five hours. And, uh, or about two o'clock, I, sent you a text message and i said dude i, I can't <laughs> i'm not coming yeah, i think i still have the text actually yeah <laughs> you're like oh yeah man sorry maybe maybe tomorrow so i i sent the text and i turned off my alarm and i fell asleep within 30 seconds yep, it, yep. Just, it was just the anticipation of yeah. having to get up it was trauma it was traumatizing traumatized me but uh it, that's the thing if you turkey hunt you get up early uh, yeah. because those birds come down as soon as there's a the sign of light those birds hit the ground and they're they're going no. for it uh, I didn't harvest a spring bird this year uh, for a couple of reasons. I didn't get out enough, and a couple of the places I was going to go were inundated with hunters. So rather than scout around for new areas, right. and I get, I get, a, I get, unfortunately, get involved in other projects. So, but a lot of a lot of my friends did get their spring bird. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a pretty good. I think I don't know what the so numbers you get, were. You get one one spring bird uh, with turkey hunting. You get you know, one male in the in the spring. It's the month of May. It start well. It's May third to the end of the month. Uh, it has to be a tom, or a beard. It has to have a, has to have a beard. Yeah. Um, and a beard is you know the, that's that thing that's hangs off their yeah. neck or their that front. That is actually breast. called a beard. Yep, that's called yeah. a beard. Uh, confusing. It makes it confusing because we do have bearded hens in the state. So if you yeah yeah if you shoot a bearded hen, you haven't broke the law, uh, but they discourage you from doing that. But if if a lot of people aren't really savvy with turkey, you could easily shoot a, a hen with a beard thinking it's a, a, a tom. I right. mean, it's an honest mistake. And that's they they discourage that, but it's not. But they understand that you can make that mistake. They're not going to, yeah, you're not going to get in trouble for it. Um, and you can only hunt until noontime. In other words, yeah. Why is that? Well, because I, I, I believe that they give, uh, it's when the birds are, breeding or they're you know trying to lay eggs in a snap and i think what they they want to do is give them uh afternoon time they want to i guess give the birds a fair a fair shake so they can you know get on their eggs later or whatever yeah. whatever the kid i'm not again obviously i'm not a biologist but it's it's uh you can't hunt past noontime in the spring mm -hmm. so um and you know again i i can never emphasize enough or uh talk enough about if you want to hunt these things if you want to harvest these animals you have to you know you got to allow them to reproduce right. so so if there's a law in place it's because you know that's when those animals are need to be harvested and if they're not if they're protected then there's they're doing other things and that other thing being right. you know trying to live their lives and, and and reproduce so that's another thing we're going to talk about on this podcast you know for talking about turkey hunting or bear hunting, like why is it that you can only shoot one turkey? And why is it that 
you can only well, that's good bears point. <laughs> in September, you know. Yeah, that's, uh... Oftentimes there are reasons why there are these rules. Well, we can talk about that now if you want. Um, basically, the reason those uh, those laws are put in, well, I say those rules and uh, bag limits, if you yeah. want, are put in place by after because biologists do studies that say, you know, there's a certain carrying capacity on a given piece of land or area or state or mm -hmm. however you want to break it up that will support that many species. Let's, let's talk about turkeys. Now, the, the reason turkeys kind of make me laugh is because I don't think anybody can drive through the state of New Hampshire and think we have a shortage of turkeys. <laughs> is that an act? Is that a yeah, safe We have a lot of turkeys. We have too many turkeys. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm actually amazed that I, I saw a, a, a roadkill turkey the other day, but it's not often actually that I no, see those. And no. I, I'm kind of amazed by that because they are everywhere. They're crossing the road. Yeah. Um, and I would think that people would hit them more often, but it doesn't seem like they do. Turkeys are the Einstein of the woods. Um, it's amazing how quick, fast, mm -hmm. they just, they're, they're, they're afraid of everything. And that's what keeps them alive. Right. Cause they don't have a scent. They can't smell like a deer, a white tail. Oh. Yeah. A white tailed deer is alive because of its nose. Right. Same with a bear. I mean, right. that's their sense. Turkeys don't smell you. Yeah. They, it's all sight. Anything that looks out of the ordinary. In other words, if they come into your yard every day to, to feed on grasshoppers or whatever they're feeding. Right. And there's a car parked in the yard. They know that situation but if 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 you're if there's something different about that they're like that why is that different you know they're just very alert as, as to mm. what's going on around them mm. um and they're fast you know a lot yeah. of people think that the coyotes or the predators are taking them down the bottom the coyotes and bobcats have a hard time catching turkeys i believe that because i've seen that a turkey will suddenly explode off the ground into the air oh, yeah in, and, in, in in a millisecond yeah and yeah. it's startling because it makes a lot of noise too yeah. Um, so it, they're both getting away from danger and also maybe, um, you know, scaring whatever's coming after them. Yeah. Uh, and Startling. It, you it, know. The speed that they move is yeah. incredible. And it's like every, and they're all, if there's 20 turkeys on the ground, they're all in sync with each other. So if one gets spooked, they're all spooked. And, you know, again, to, to talk a little bit more about turkey hunting, it, it, it's kind of when you, when people say it's like, oh, you know, I, I've got them in my, I don't see why you consider that hunting. It, well, because it is hunting if you do it in good style, meaning, you know, you put yourself out in the woods, you set up your decoys, you call the turkeys in. That is a skill, and that's not easy. Um, you, you, you can't shoot them off the back porch with a twenty-two. Mm -hmm. That's not hunting. That's shooting. Right. So to harvest a turkey in good style is a sport. It's, it's not easy. Trust me. I mean, uh, it's deceiving because, you know, you see them, like you say, every day. They're in the road. They're here. They're there. And it seems like, well, geez, I could just shoot one anywhere. Well, not legally mm -hmm. and not in good style. Right. So, and they're a smart bird. They're incredibly smart. Uh, and that's what keeps them alive. And another thing about the turkeys is, is those were just reintroduced not that long ago. Yeah, because, well, I grew up in Maine, mm -hmm. in the country. Yep. Uh, and I spent a lot of my childhood, you know, we had 50-odd um, acres uh, and our neighbor next door was, was like a tree farm with 800 acres. So I spent, you know, there was a lot of woods and I don't remember wild turkeys. We didn't have wild turkeys. My dad, who still lives on the same property says now like, oh yeah, he has, you know, flock, flocks, flocks of, uh, yeah, I think that's what they call them. Flocks. Yeah. Of tur wild turkeys that go through. Yep. And actually his, uh, his neighbor on the other side now is a, um, a farmer, organic small you know farmer mm -hmm. um who raises turkeys and she, so she has the domestic turkeys fenced in and um the wild turkeys will come will come by and uh um, yeah hey what's going on <laughs> yeah yeah and i guess the domestic turkeys escape sometimes but they don't want to go anywhere they just no why would yeah. they you know they yeah. know where they're um they know where they're because they, they stick to with their food source Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, but, you know, I, I think it was, I, I, again, I should have probably um, researched this before I started talking about it, but it was like the 70s or uh, the 80s, I think, that they, they reintroduced them. And it was probably the most successful wild game reintroduction yeah. program in the history of the United States. Yeah. They just took off and they survived. And uh, again, now, and maybe in time, so you'll see them let us harvest more birds. Like maybe in the fall, they'll let us have a longer shotgun season. Because uh -huh. in the fall... Uh, September 15th 
to December 15th, you can hunt them, with, hunt either sex, hen or tom, with a bow. Uh-huh. And then there is a, a there, it started out with a five day shotgun season in the third week of o- October. And now I think they give us uh, uh, seven days. You know, they mm-hmm. give you a week and a weekend with a shotgun, either sex. So I think you might see more of that as they realize maybe we have too many birds. But stuff like that, you know, when it, it takes for legislation to change a law like that is it takes forever. Well, and a lot of times by the time the law changes, it's irrelevant, you know. Right. Particularly in New Hampshire. And this is a podcast about, you know, being in the woods, not being in uh, Concord. But in, we have 400 state representatives <laughs> in New Hampshire. Yeah. So, you know, talk about trying to get a law change. I don't it's, even know 400 people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least not ones that you like. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's incredible. And you try to get everybody on the same page. Uh, what is the motive? And what it, it, it's, it's, uh, and uh, I, I don't know. Like it, to get something like that, like gray squirrels, for instance, you couldn't, you couldn't hunt gray squirrel in Carroll County for years, years and years. Yeah. And there were more gray squirrel than people. And I actually was shocked when you told me, oh yeah, there's a season. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which we haven't, I guess we're still, we're still. Oh, well, okay. So yeah. we're back in May. So we got turkey season and we're looking forward to the white perch run and then fiddleheads. Fiddleheads, yeah. Fiddleheads usually yeah. come in May, end of May, early June, and uh, that's a, tr- you know, you've you've had some of the fiddleheads we picked. Oh, right? yeah. They're yeah. just a treasure. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I grew up eating fiddleheads, too. Yeah, and I love, you know, that's all part of, you know, being a woodsman is, you yeah. know, uh, foraging and harvesting wild edibles and fiddleheads are definitely a bonus. Yeah. Um, and we had a pretty good year, fiddlehead. Yeah. Fiddlehead picking this year. And people have, like, spots where they go to... You know, secret what spots? spots? I don't know any yeah, spots. Yeah, you don't know any spots. There are no spots. There's, There's no fiddleheads. In no there. fiddleheads, no. No, there are no. none. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're into June, and, uh, you know, brook trout fishing is, yeah. is probably my favorite thing to do in June. Yeah. Yeah, you um, had a nice uh, brook trout video a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, uh, um, it, it's, I love them. They're great. The state of New Hampshire does do a really good job stalking brooks and ponds mm-hmm. with brook trout but there's still places you can catch go catch native brook trout in mm-hmm. the state and surprisingly not a lot of people really fish for them like you know there's the, you know the easy places to get to beside the road everybody fishes those out whatever but you know there's still a lot of places you can go catch native brook trout mm-hmm. people just aren't interested in going after anymore it's too bad but also in june there's a lot of for other foraging like um you know there are mushrooms certain mushrooms coming out there are certain um wild edibles popping up in june uh you know the strawberries start coming out uh mm. the blueberries and raspberries are pretty much end of june july actually i just saw some uh the blueberries yesterday they should be ready in a, probably a week or two really oh yeah wow i actually posted a picture on the instagram um it looks like a really good season for blueberries so far cool um but then you get into july so we're through June. July is uh, my favorite is when the bass fishing really, really kicks in because bass fishing, bass are on beds uh, from May 15th to June 15th. You can't keep a bass in the state of New Hampshire because they're on beds doing their thing and so on and so forth. So I kind of just avoid them until July and uh, the, the spawn's over and they've, they've done their business and then you start bass fishing. And New Hampshire has some really good bass fishing, smallmouth and largemouth. Mm-hmm. And I'm primarily a, a smallmouth guy. I like to, I'd like i rather fish with smallies. And you, you can eat smallmouth. They're absolutely delicious. Um, so, I, you know, July is, is good bass fishing. Still, it's good foraging. And, and I start usually looking to catch crayfish mm-hmm. in July. Uh, I love eating those. We used to catch a lot of them when I was a kid. And you catch those with like a like a trap, right? Like yeah, you can uh, a minnow trap basically. Yeah, a minnow trap. Uh, you can catch. You I mean you? There's a couple of different ways to do it, but the uh, easiest way is you know you take some uh, some you know some fish carcasses or cat. Some people use cat food. I just it's one more <laughs> thing you got to buy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, popcorn. There's a bunch of different ways, but I mean you you uh, you can get them to come into a trap, and they're they're good eating. They're not as big as they are down south. Like some of the ones I get into down south, I say down south, you know. Louisiana, um, they're huge. Yeah, they're huge. But yeah, the ones up here, are small by small, small, pretty small. Yeah. Yeah. Although there's places like I mean, I used to go up. There's there's a couple of rivers, believe it or not, up north that I used to catch some really big blue claws. Hmm. Um, I actually got to go back there and see if they're still around, but they're really delicious. 
So, um, so anyway, that's August. Oh, oh, and the other thing, I'm, I'm sorry, that's July, but August is, I think, well, not just I think, um, the time to go after late trout. Mm -hmm. Because usually the thermal, the thermal climb is set in, and the thermal climb is just a level in the lake where it separates the two, um, you know, the, the warm water and the cold water, mm -hmm. just to make, just to simplify it. Right. But once that thermal climb sets in, those fish are, are, are in a certain area. And, you know, you, you can go out and catch really, it's really good lake trout fishing. Um, you go out there with you, uh, with a graph and you can just mark hundreds and hundreds of fish. And we do, we've done well in the last few years. And that's the other thing. For some reason, lake trout in Winnipesaukee have come a long way in the last 20 years. I mean, like when we used to go ice fishing for lake trout 20, 30, when I was a kid, you'd catch four or five fish a year and you thought you were doing something. We mm -hmm. catch, we catch like six or seven fish in a morning now. Yeah. It's just a, the, oh, it's so many more. Yeah, 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 they've done well. I don't know if it's the lakes. The lakes obviously been cleaned up in the last um, yeah twenty or thirty years, but also um, I guess we'll become better fishermen. Yeah, as well. But uh, better equipment in terms of better like, equipment, the flashers, the use of yeah. electronics. Yeah, you know, flashers. Uh, mm -hmm. We, you know, there's a bunch of different things we didn't have when I was a kid. I mean, we'd right. go out there with a with a with a spud an ice chisel, a couple of tip-ups, and some Arkansas shiners, and good luck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, now we're out there on ATV, snow machines, run and gun. You know, you're drilling 7,500 holes a day and um, catching a lot of fish. But the fish are there. Yeah. You know, and Togue is actually, um, lake trout are indigenous. So mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. Yeah. Versus, you know, salmon, rainbow, and all that stuff. Brown trout, they're imported European, what I call, mm -hmm. well, what we call barrel fish. You know, people are all up and you know it's oh a beautiful rainbow this and that it's like what about lake trout you know you, yeah. lake trout are indigenous so like you catch a lake trout it's like oh what a grease ball who wants that <laughs> so lake trout are fun to catch i don't i don't eat them i don't keep them we release them all unless oh, okay. we kill them i mean unless you kill them during the catch then we eat them yeah. but um lake trout are uh, they're fun to catch they're 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 they're, they're a neat fish actually uh but so that's that's august so once we get through august um we get into september and september 1st is bear season that's mm -hmm. when bear season starts and i love bear hunting my wife and i it's probably her favorite fish uh favorite wild meat to eat dish <laughs> i did say fish yeah, yeah. she doesn't she died on it i can't believe i said that because she can't eat fish but yeah <laughs> bear meat is delicious if it's taken care of yeah. um unfortunately people don't think bear meat is good but it is delicious you've had it yeah yeah well uh your wife made a really delicious shepherd's pie oh, yeah. out of uh, yeah. bear meat and we've had i think like bear burgers maybe yeah yeah I'm sure bear burgers yeah. bear we do all kinds of tacos we do bear yeah tacos. yeah that's what it was tacos with, with and bear uh, meat. you know bear meat um is it's delicious the trick the thing with bear is as soon as you pull the trigger or release the arrow however you harvest your, mm -hmm. your bear um the, the bear the, the meat goes bad fast really quickly yeah you got to get it cooled down what we generally do is we'll we'll you know field dress it and we'll put 60 pounds of ice in the chest cavity yeah and then we'll let it sit overnight the carcass cool down and then of course there's a in the state in well new hampshire for instance you know you need to contact your conservation officer he comes out inspects the bear looks at it pulls the tooth this is all part of mm -hmm. their research they have to do this they have to take a tooth they take a tooth, yeah. Why is that? Uh, to determine the age. But uh, uh -huh. I to determine the age for one thing. The other thing, I don't know. Well, just as yeah. part of their research. Huh. Again, I don't. I don't know a lot about that end of it. Mm -hmm. I know the, the the legal end of it. Right. Is what you have to like, do. Yeah. And they do. They pull a tooth. Um, they are. Uh, and you know they you you fill out a they ask you a series of questions. Uh, they ask you where you shot the you know just harvested the the bear and then you you locate that area on a map they mm -hmm. may ask you to go back to the site where mm -hmm. you killed it and if they ask you you have to take them and show them where you mm -hmm. dispatch the animal um i don't i've never had that happen personally uh -huh. i've had other had other folks um have that happen to them yeah not a big deal you just take them back to where you well especially if you told them the accurate place then it's yeah. not a big deal you just... well the issue is uh if 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 you if you bait if you're baiting um you have to have permits and so on and so right forth. right uh if if you're baiting without a permit then it's illegal 
Right. So they, you know, they, if they if they think if, if if your conservation officer suspects you've done something that may be questionable, he's going to ask you to. So whatever, if, right. you, if you're playing by the rules, not a problem. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like anything else. Yeah, you don't be afraid to call a game board. They're not, you know, yeah. they're, they're not out there to to you know take you take your license. Right. As long as you're playing by the rules, it, it's cool. I've never had a problem. You right. know, uh, I can't. You know, and that's about all I want to say about that. <laughs> but um, also too, um, September fifteenth is archery season, mm-hmm. and a lot of guys uh, love love bow hunting. Uh, that starts September fifteenth. So you, now you said you mentioned shooting an arrow at a bear. Do people actually? Oh yeah, bow hunt bears. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like from from I, uh, from, from trees or from a tree stand. Yeah, uh, probably preferably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I personally. I mean, the bears can climb the trees too, though, shoot. right? <laughs> Yes, they can, but they won't. Uh, a black bear, you know, black bears don't attack you. I mean, I don't even want to talk about this, but bear, you know, bears are, are they don't want anything to do with you. Yeah. I mean, if you if you corner a bear and you put it, yeah. I mean, if a bear if a black bear attacks you, right? Then if I don't, God forbid. <laughs> well, I mean, you, yeah, you got problems because you're you're someplace you probably shouldn't be, and I don't even know when they'll, if if there was an attack in the state of New Hampshire from a black bear. Mm. Um, and I well, we had that. one in the backyard here and it came out like 50 feet away from us. Yeah. Um, possibly every time I tell this story, it gets closer to me, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it was close and it kind of, it was making noises and looked at us and we just kind of slowly walked back towards the house. Well, and... yeah, they see, and, and it, there's an issue actually with black bear in New Hampshire because there, there's more and more and more. There's actually almost too many black bear in the state. Yeah. Um, and they become more domesticated. They become aggressive. I had that one, the one of the pictures you saw from what was it, four years ago. Yeah. We had one in the backyard that was over 500 pounds. Yeah. And uh, it was aggressive. You know, two o'clock in the afternoon, it was ripping down bird feeders coming up. You know, it's yeah. that, the, the problem, the, the more domesticated they come, the less fear they have. They become issues. I'm not saying they're going to attack you, but they will become more nuisance. Right. Um, well, the chipmunks in my yard too. Like they, they're they're, they they're don't a... care if I'm there. <laughs> they go right past me. I had one walk just right past me, like two feet away from me, um, mouthful of you know acorns or whatever yeah. Yeah. to get to its hole. Aggressive. So, but you Aggressive. know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful of those guys. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, but uh, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> if you go from a chipmunk to a bear, like the same type of. Yeah, you know, yeah. not caring that you're there. Yeah, but that's a problem. Yeah, it, it is. But again, when I was a kid, one of my earliest memories of hunting was my uncle. Uh, we we harvested a bear. I think I was only twelve at the time. My dad shot one when I was six, and mm-hmm. I remember him dragging it home. Um, but and then my uncle got one back. I think I was probably twelve, if I remember. So, but when I was a kid, there weren't any. There were very few black bear. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're just more and more now. Th- 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 there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, the habit, their habit, um, they can live in, in rural areas and, uh, there are less and less hunters. Yeah. And you know, there are only three apex predators, really. There's, there's lion, mountain lions, right? No, let's not talk about mountain lions, yeah. <laughs> uh, bear and wolves. Okay. They really don't have anything to worry about other than hot, you know, getting hit by a car, right. Uh, hunters, um, and just they die of natural causes. I mean, nothing really. I mean, bears. Bears will like a a a, a an an adult male bear will kill a cub and eat mm-hmm. it. It does happen. Okay, but that's, but that's its own species. Yeah, yeah. They don't have. It's any, not like a moose is going to no, kill a bear. No, no, no. And um, but as as less and less hunters are out there, because there are fewer and fewer people are hunting these days. Um, the bears have less, less natural predators and they just, their, their numbers keep growing and growing and it's becoming a concern to a lot of biologists. It's like, you know, we want to harvest, you know, when they say we want to harvest a thousand bears, I mean, don't quote me on the numbers, but I think New Hampshire, we got like 834 last year. Mm-hmm. Now they were saying, well, you know, we, we should probably do another thousand. Well, it's like, you can't even, you can't even harvest a thousand. How are you going to do right. 2000? So there aren't even enough hunters to no. do no. minimum of what they want no and, and again hunt, bear hunting is tough yeah it's, it's hard it's 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 yeah. it's it's it's, uh, it's not easy um yeah. what about the guys who go to who drive by with their dogs 
I hear them driving by and the Houndsman? dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dogs are howling at the back of the truck. And well, that's uh, that's hound hunting, and it is you know that's under fire like so many other things. I mean, and there's a couple of the, the there are a lot of guys that are very successful hunting hunting bear with hounds, mm -hmm. and uh, the problem is it's not very uh, urban friendly. Uh, and what right. happens is you know you dump your dogs out front here was that they're going to run that bear god knows wherever and there's a lot of controversy and a lot of uh um there's a lot of issues with it um I, i'm not i don't i mean i have hunted with hounds mm -hmm. a long time ago mm -hmm. i don't want to deal around here in the areas that we hunt it's just too it's too tight yeah um, there's, a, there's yeah. a lot of a lot of issues i'm not i'm not pro i'm not I, i'm not certainly not against it um but it, it's hard to to hunt bear with dogs in a, in a, in a, in a, in an area like, you know, there's a lot of houses and developments in, in yeah. this area. Yeah. And it, and it causes problems. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are death against it. They think it's, they think it's cruel. They think it's this, they think it's that. That's neither here nor there. The bottom line is if you hunt bear with dogs around here, you're going to have issues. Right. Cause with, your, your dogs are going to chase the bear. Oh, through, somebody's backyard. Yeah, through and, backyards, through horse farms, through this, yeah. through that. And again, I don't, you know, it, it it's, you know, 50 years ago, it wouldn't have been a problem because every, that's what people did. But now you've got people that move, have moved in. They've got horse farms. They've got, mm -hmm. it's just not conducive, yeah. you know? Uh, and then you've got baiting, you know, the other, the other way is, uh, you, and people are against that, you know, it's all, oh, it's cruel. You know, you this, you that. Well, without houndsmen and without baiting, I don't, I don't know, realistically, I don't think we'd shoot a hundred bear. I mean, right. it's just, you know, when's the last time you can ask anybody, honestly, who, who has hunted in New Hampshire most of their life, how many bear have they seen out hunting? A lot of guys have never seen one. Never seen one bear. No. Yeah. I got a friend who's only seen, he has shot one bear in his life, and that's the only one he ever saw. He was out hanging tree stands and shot a 227-pound black bear. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice bear. But that's the only bear he's ever seen out <laughs> hunting. Right, right. Uh, they're hard. It's it's a hard thing, and without baiting, even you know, though at the same time there are more bears than ever before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's because yeah. yes, exactly. Right. But it's still hard to go out and you know see a bear. Yeah. Without you know without employ you know without without hounds or without baiting, and again that's that's something that's under fire. People are dead against it. Yeah. It's not for me, you know. Uh, all I can say is you know if you remove, and I'm I'm, I'm kind of plagiarizing my friend tim a little bit when i say this but if you remove the apex predators which is what we have done as people as a society mm -hmm. we've, we've killed all the grizzlies we've killed the wolves with this with that now there's been reintroduction and so forth but when you remove the apex predators you then become the apex predator right and it's so... your responsibility to 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 manage <laughs> you know the 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 wildlife in a sense i mean you become you've become that ape so now you've got to you've got to take care of that squirrel population you've got to take care of that <laughs> bear population you've got to yeah. take care of those turkeys or things are things are, are not going to stay in check and you know it's easy to sit here and say well you know uh, i you know hunting's cruel it's it's wrong you shouldn't do that well it's it's not it's it's a if it's done ethically and legally it's not cruel and it's not mm -hmm. unethical right and it's a necessity um, and those, it's, it's, it's hard to get your head around it, but the survival of those species depend on proper management. Uh, you know, you, you, you have to keep the numbers in check because certain areas only have a certain carrying capacity for a certain amount of animals. And if they exceed those carrying capacities, disease sets in, predator, you know, it, it, it gets ugly. And a lot of people don't want to get their head around it, but, and I'm, I know I'm off on a tangent, but it's important <laughs> to talk about. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could definitely talk about, um, oh, it's resource management more. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's something we, you know, we got to talk about, um, yeah. but no, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's gets a lot of, there's a lot of controversy. Uh, it's emotional. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, there's a lot of things that, I mean, it, it's gonna, you know, this, it, we're going to get some negativity talking about it now, but yeah. it, it's got to be talked about. And it's important that people realize it's it's uh, it's it's something we need to do, yeah. but we need to do it legally. We need to do it ethically, right? And if it's done that way, but we also have to bring people in and get more people more people hunting it and deal with it hmm. deal with it that way rather than you know eliminating the species, which is what we did the first time, right? When you right. think about it. Right. <laughs> 
So anyway. So that was September. That was uh, that was a long month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also, you know, September is the month when it all starts, all the hunting season. But, yeah. you know, then October rolls around and we're into bird hunting. And we're into upland game, rabbit hunting. Mm. Uh, the nights are getting colder. Um, you know, October. I, October is one of my favorite months because you've got that autumn season. Those cold nights and crisp mornings. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that. Uh, then November, uh, you know, deer season. Mm -hmm. And that's like a long tradition. People, and unfortunately, deer season's been one of the seasons that's eluded me in a lot of ways because because of the nature of my business. Right. I right. get so busy in the fall. If I get if I get screwed out of one season, it's deer season. Right. I've always had a hard time in, you know, I haven't done as much deer hunting as a lot of my friends and been nearly as successful. Yeah, because November rolls around, it's I'm cold and days nobody's week. furnace works. And, no. and that's yeah. why I like deer hunting because yeah. that's September and I can still get out there and go. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love to deer hunt, unfortunately, just something that's always eluded me for a lot of, a lot of reasons, but it's mostly work related. Um, and December, things start freezing up and you start, you know, you start looking for the back pond, start ice fishing and it all starts over the whole, the whole vicious over circle again. starts over again, <laughs> but that's it in a nutshell. That's, yeah. uh, that's, that's, that's what it's like being a woodsman in New Hampshire. So, and that's what we're, we're planning to do with this podcast is we're going to, to begin with, we're shooting for one podcast per month. Um, probably do it at the end of the month. Today is, you know, going to be the last Wednesday of the month, so maybe we'll we'll shoot for that. Um, and we'll we've just done it, sort of a um, Ed's given a overview of the whole year. But what we'll do is whatever that particular month is, we'll talk about what, um, or I guess maybe if we're doing it at the end of month, we should talk about what's coming. We'll we'll decide. We'll be talking about one specific thing, um, and go into more detail about it. And, um, and, and that's what we're planning to do with this podcast. Um, yeah. we also look forward to bringing people in, you know, yeah. like, uh, people yeah. that are special, like professional foragers. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the other thing about being a woodsman is, is, is doing a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like Jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. Uh, but, but it's, I know people who are professional foragers mm -hmm. who know more about like one of my, one, probably one of my uh, less known skills is foraging. I mean, I know how to do a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but I talk to people regularly who like, Oh my God, you know, that's what you put on that, this and that. And, you know, for med medicinal purposes right. and stuff. And, and would love, to, I'd love to get, you know, people like that to come and yeah. talk. And so like when we do a specific podcast, it'll be like specific to that. Right. So or we might do some like field interviews, like oh, go out yeah. Yeah. with somebody and do, and maybe half the podcast will be from the studio and half of it will be from, you know, out in the field, you know, we could do that. Yep. Um, yep. Um, yeah. And it'll be every, anything from wilderness camping to hunting, bass fishing, mm -hmm. salmon, you know, got whatever, whatever yep. uh, comes along, whoever we can get to come and talk with us. And I mean, you know, we're always doing something. Yeah. And so the podcast, uh, we're going to, you know, we're putting it on YouTube as a video, but it's also going to be available soon uh, from iTunes. So you can subscribe in iTunes. It'll be in the, in the iTunes directory, which means that if you don't use iTunes, you, but if you use a different podcast application, you can also subscribe. Um, you know, if you listen on your phone with, you know, there's different podcast applications, you know, um, overcast, dog catcher, you know, whatever it is, there are lots of competitors, you'll be able to subscribe, just uh, either search for the Woodsman's podcast, or go to, we'll put the links in the video descriptions, if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, and we'll, it'll also be available at workingclasswoodsman.com. Uh, so just uh, in the final moments here, um, let's talk maybe briefly about how we met. Um, because as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm not a woodsman oh. and, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I've been asking you questions throughout 
this uh, while we've been talking. And that's because, you know, there are a lot of things I don't know about this. I work on the, I'm a, I work on the computer. That's what I do. <laughs> but that's a skill. Um, and it's a skill and it's, it's just a different skill. And it's, you know, it's neither better nor worse nor here nor there. No, but just um, but if I'm in the middle of the woods, you know, it, it's not going to help me as much. So what, what I would like to do in this podcast is be the person, you know, for people who are listening, who are interested, but don't know and they're the reason they're listening is they want to learn from you you know things about the woods i'll try to be the person who's you know filling in for them because they can't ask questions while we're talking at all yeah i'll be doing that and i'm doing that because i genuinely don't know the answers to these questions well i'd like to immediately say i don't know all the answers either and <laughs> well nobody does that's so, i think as so, you get older um yeah. and uh you realize that uh that knowledge is is also the knowledge of what you don't know. And it's almost like the older you get, the less you know. Right. And and it's funny well, the more you know that you don't know. Yeah. What you don't know. It gets it gets humbling yeah. if you let it. Yeah. But uh, but also too, you can kind of look back and say, I could probably figure my way out of that one. You know, yeah. in some cases. But but again, um, and again, this isn't the whole pr the whole purpose of this is to <clears throat> bring people together, and that's something I stress. I have mm -hmm. friends that do uh, YouTube videos. I have friends that have their guides. I have friends that are main guides, uh, New Hampshire guides as well. But um, it, it, it's more of a thing with such a small network of people. Everyone needs to be on the same page and work together. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm the first one to tell you, I don't, I don't know everything about any of this stuff. I can show you how to make maple syrup. I can show you how mm -hmm. to catch white perch. I can show you how to, uh, you know, find a, uh, an oyster mushroom. All right. But I'll guarantee you, I know people that can do it better than me. Right. And my goal is to bring those people out mm -hmm. and work as a network. And if we don't, you know, if people work together, not against each other, it's, it's better for the whole, mm -hmm. the whole circle, you know, and uh, it's a small circle, mm -hmm. you know, bushcraft. Not a lot of people. I mean, I know it's a, it's a, it's a social media phenomenon, but you go down, you know, let's take, Go into town, go down to the town docks and talk, ask 10 people, what do you think about bushcraft? How many people even know what it is? And so you think about right. that. You know, to, to us, it's second nature because we talk about it all the time. Don't they make lawnmowers? Uh, yeah. What is that? <laughs> uh, is that, a, is that a, like a boat, a bushcraft, yeah. like a Chris craft? What are you right. talking about? <laughs> but no, I mean, it's, it's, it, to us, it seems second nature. You talk about ferro rods or feather sticks yeah. or uh, bow drills. It's like, what? Right. Why would you? What are you talking right. about? But there is a growing interest. And I think it's a skill that, you know, like starting a fire with a bow drill and stuff. I think it needs to be, people need to, to again, I, I hate to bring stuff like this up, but um, it's, it's a skill people need to be familiar with and know about. Mm -hmm. And I, I jokingly say, the, I think the biggest reason you need to know how to build a fire with a bow drill is that will make you never leave the house without a Bic lighter. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and I, to this day, I've never left the house without a big lighter because I know how hard it is to start a fire rubbing sticks together. Right, <laughs> but it's a good skill to know, and yeah. uh, don't don't take it lightly. It's it's not every you know even people that are good at it can't do it all the time. It's 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 very uh, it's a it's something that's it's a skill, yeah. and you get a practice. It's a perishable skill. It's like navigation. You know, I, I know people that are very good at navigation, um, but it's a perishable skill. If you don't keep at it, you forget, you know, you mm -hmm. go on to different things. Mm -hmm. And it's stuff that I think needs to be, um, you know, we need to keep keep it in, keep it, uh, keep working at it all the time. So anyway, your question was, how did we meet? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so let's get off. No, yeah, I tend to spin. But uh, let's say, go back, was it three years ago, four years ago? Oh, four years ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Typical no heat call. Yeah. Yeah. Furnace is broken. Furnace is broken. Great. Fine. Whatever. I'm on my way. Was I, I was, I hopefully I wasn't that miserable, but that's usually how I answer the phone. But, uh, so I come so, over. What is it? <laughs> what do you want? How'd you get my number? Yeah. But, uh, as it turned out, I get here, I get to Max's house and, uh, you had a, you had an issue, a couple yeah. issues actually yeah. with your furnace that couldn't really be necessarily fixed right that day. And I think you said, well, I got nine quarter wood or six quarter wood. 
Yeah, I had a truckload of but logs. Logs. Yeah. And I'm looking at the pile of logs, and it's like, well, that's not going to fit in the stove. Right? And we also had four, four or five feet of snow. <laughs> yes, and it was cold. And it was, yeah, it was. It was in the teens. Pretty, pretty cold. And, uh, but you did fix the furnace, but then you said, uh, well, you know, if you're not doing anything this afternoon, I could come back over with my chainsaw and, and you know, my mall and help you split that up. Yep. And, uh. I guess I kind of gave you a look. <laughs> yeah, like, wait, wait a minute, what? And it's like, well, it is. He and, and you were like, well, not, I mean, just for fun, you know, I, I'm not going to charge you or anything. <laughs> and you're, again, what? Because <laughs> you were fresh in from Brooklyn. Yeah, I'd been, I, as I said, I grew up in Maine, but I we had just moved back to New England after I'd been in, in New York City for 10 years. Yeah. And, uh, and we've literally been there for three months. Yeah. As we moved here at the beginning of November. Yeah. And this was, I think, the end of February. And, uh, but also I knew that I was going to like you when you, when we started talking and, and you, you said, well, I'm not a gun nut. I only have nine guns. <laughs> did I give you a number? Yeah, you did. <laughs> Which I've since learned was it, not the accurate number. <laughs> it wasn't accurate. Not in the least. Uh, that's cool. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I do, I do have a, I do like firearms. But uh, so anyway, yeah, so you, you're like, okay, whatever. So I come and home. then, but then you're like, oh, and by the way, I'm gonna bring a camera because I have a YouTube channel. Yeah, and you're like, yeah. all right. I was like, all right, cool. So, so I went home, grabbed the camera, grabbed, and you can still watch the video. It's still on the channel. It's uh, cutting firewood with Max. Yeah. And we took your Jeep, and I showed. I came back with my chainsaw, my timber jack. Yep. protect you know chaps and all that we hooked onto the, the logs pulled them out with your wagoneer at the time yeah and i had never used a chainsaw before and in fact i didn't use the chainsaw but yep. you used it but um but yeah. we, we bucked up probably half a quarter wood that afternoon yeah and i think we ended back when i was uh i think we uh yeah um uh, we probably half a quarter wood and that's how it all got started. Us, got us through the winter, so yeah. that was that was fortuitous <laughs> on my part. <laughs> but it was, you know, that, it was fun. It ended up being a, a you know, great friendship relationship. Yeah. But, but again, um, you never know what's around the corner. Yeah, you know? yeah, you never know who you're going to meet, um, who's going to turn out to be, you know, a really good friend. And yeah. sometimes the other people you meet, and I don't know, you just don't click. But no. Nope. But uh, no, it, it's been a it's been a good run, and uh, we we have a really good time doing this this sort of thing, and uh, we're getting I think hopefully getting better at it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And on that, you know, whenever we do YouTube, well, whenever there's a video or you know, we love the comments. Some of them, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you know, if, if if we're doing something that you like, uh, like say it, say that, you know, because we're yeah. always looking for suggestions. Yeah. You know, uh, the great thing about your channel is you get you do get a lot of comments on videos yeah um what i think are a lot of comments good quality comments and um yeah let us know how you know if something is working on the channel because we're we're working on growing the channel uh, if you're not subscribed please do subscribe and click on the bell icon because otherwise you won't get notifications mm -hmm. um and uh and let us know which because we're, we're doing different types of videos we have the cooking videos and the hunting videos and the fishing and the harvesting and um foraging and you know let us know which ones you like and uh and i guess we should probably wrap this up because we've been we've been talking for almost an hour now so yeah. um but this is our this is our first podcast and yeah. you know the main goal is that if we're having fun hopefully you're having fun so we're gonna that's that's our goal to be interesting to each other as well as to yeah. to the viewers and, again, and the listeners. It, yeah, and this is a learning. It's all about you know we're learning every day. Uh, I learn every day. And but before I end it, I do want to throw a, a shout out to Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a, a, a group that I have subscribed to, and uh, they uh, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers dot com. Go check them out. Uh, it's all about um keeping public lands public and mm -hmm. uh, they put it that they, they're they're growing fast not fast enough uh but go check them out uh become a member if you if this is the stuff you like to do the most important thing is to protect it preserve mm -hmm. it and uh this is a this is an organization that i've recently become a accustomed to and i've, I've really so far pretty impressed 
was the, the amount of the extent of work that they put into protecting our lifestyle. Excellent. So we'll put that link in the show notes. And for the inaugural episode of the Woodsman's Podcast, I'm Max Ledoux, and Ed Butler is the working class woodsman. And we will see you next time. <laughs>